Hi, this is Phil Newman, and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined today by Tobias Reitmut of Longevity Investors Conference and Maximum. Hey, Tobias. Good morning, Phil. How are you? Well, excellent. We had our high-intensity interval training already, so I think I'm warmed up for the interview. Great. Well, let's talk about longevity. Um, a lot of people are talking about longevity very much in the future, and I believe you have a, a different opinion on that in terms of whether the market is the future or is it now? I would say the market starts now. Uh, I mean, of course, you can do a lot of things for your longevity. Uh, you know, 100 years ago, you could have done intermittent fasting. <laughs> That's not the thing. But what we see now is that there is a lot of research, you know, translational research is now putting in, being put into products and companies. Yeah? And so both from a consumer, but also from an investor's perspective, I think it's the right time to, to start with longevity investments and interventions. Mm -hmm. So Tobias, let's talk about uh, therapeutics and the fact that obviously there's a lot of interest in the therapies that are in development now within the sector, but of course they've got clinical pathways to go through. What's your level of interest in therapeutics as an organization? Well, we're definitely interested, yeah. However, it's not the only thing we look at. Uh, and uh, at Maximum, we basically see longevity from two sides. One is longevity promotion, the other one is longevity consumption. Yeah? And promotion means everything from therapeutics, uh, therapeutics but also you know, supplements and, and uh, fitness interventions, lifestyle and so on. The consumption side though, I think it's relatively new, which means our society is changing. Yeah? In, in the olden times, uh, we had uh, three stages in life, from birth until the end of education, uh, then your business life, uh, and then a relatively short seniority, aging death. Yeah? Today, before you talk about being old and you know, moving to uh, the death status, um, you have an active seniority. And this can be 20 years, you know, from 60 to 80, for example. And people there don't want to be called old. They are active. Uh, they, they want to interact. They want to be integrated in society. Uh, and I think not too many services and products cater to this target group. And that's something we very actively look at. And we, are, we also build companies because we believe this is the fastest growing target group in the world. Uh, and, and there needs to be somebody taking care of, you know, and they give you an example. Uh, one of the companies we are starting right now is Senior Co-Living. And this is not homes for old people. This is a new way of living a lifestyle for active seniors who want to mingle with others, who want to have exposure to you know, social networks, activities, and so on, and who not necessarily want to live in the countryside, but be closer to the cultural centers again. So that's definitely something as a company builder we look as well. Interesting. So you're looking at opportunities that are within the longevity ecosystem, but ones that you can move on relatively quickly and are kind of de-risked, I would imagine, in terms of looking at how things can pan out with therapeutics. Exactly right. I mean, you couldn't have put it better. We try to avoid the classic biotech risk. Uh, so what we do not do is we don't go into, you know, uh, molecule discovery and then all the way through different stages until FDA approval, which takes 10, 15 years and costs a fortune. And it's still kind of digital, whether it works out or not. So that's a risk we do not want, don't want to take. So we have given ourselves basically three parameters when we look at what business models we want to use to build companies. Uh, number one, we must have a longevity impact and be science-based. Yeah? Number two, and I think this is exactly in this direction of the question, we want companies to produce a turnover within five years. And this excludes any kind of drug discovery because you will not do it in five years. Yeah? So what, what we look at is a bit more the shovels to the gold rush, uh, you know, rather cosmetics maybe than uh, having a medicament. Yeah? Um, as I said before, new forms of living and services and so on, uh, supplements, novel food orders and so on, that all works. Yeah? And the third one basically, of course, is scalability. Uh, so we look at everything from an angle of can this become a unicorn, is it a scalable product service and so on. So that's interesting. So we all know that the, the market in the U.S. is pretty big, right, in yep. terms of the population as well as the appetites. So you are organized in a, uh, in a very Swiss fashion. You're here in, uh, in this beautiful country. What are your plans about moving out from, uh, from Switzerland internationally? Oh, we already did. Um, when we look at uh, the portfolio companies which are active uh, today, for example, Avea. Avea is moving uh, as we speak already to Asia. Uh, so we have started with uh, Switzerland, Germany, Austria and England, uh, where uh, the products are distributed in a direct-to-consumer uh, orientation. And now we have already opened um, a company, well, a daughter company in Singapore, uh, from where we want to uh, go into Indonesia, um, uh, you know, potentially China and so on. So all these markets there are, are super interesting. And 
you know, you mentioned the United States. Yes, of course, it's a super interesting market. You know, 300 million people, one language makes a lot of sense, but it's also the most crowded market. And so what we aim to do is to carry out the Swiss brands we have, and the Swiss still works quite nicely, into new markets. And I don't say that we don't go to America, but for example, here we take Asia first. Yeah? And I mean, our company building model is a global one. So we do not tell our entrepreneurs that they have to set up shop in Switzerland, uh, that they, they can do this wherever they are. Uh, for tax reasons, the legal setup makes a lot of sense in Switzerland. But when we look at Biolitica, another company of ours, they have a team from China to South Africa, United States, and Switzerland. Uh, and, and it's a virtual setup. And, and, and also their clients are global already. Um, we plan to open um, uh, a campus. Uh, so the first campus will be in Switzerland. But already now uh, we have a, a, a request basically from Saudi Arabia where we would like to open a campus there as well. We want to open a campus in Singapore as well. We will open one in America as well. So. Our job as a company builder is to bring the best talent, both from the research, but also from the entrepreneurial side, to the companies we build. And that cannot happen only in Switzerland. Even though I love Switzerland and I like to be here, but our, our mandate is a global one. That's very refreshing to hear, actually, because in, in terms of what you're looking to do, I think the, um, the demonstration of what you're doing already is, is, uh, is there. What are the areas that you're kind of looking at from a scientific perspective? Uh, you mentioned, obviously, you know, community living and you're looking at clinical. What about uh, other areas associated with more, not therapeutic, but more uh, interventions that people can help as part of their diet or um, their intake? Yeah. yeah, so we, we do have uh, an entrepreneur and residence working on the microbiome case. Um, I see a lot of potential there, but it also still needs uh, a lot of uh, validation, I would say, before we uh, build a business there. Uh, another topic where we still hope to open by the end of this year a company uh, is in the skin rejuvenation, uh, where we talk about uh, a biological way to uh, change the pigmentation of skin cells, which originally was thought to be you know, a, a purely cosmetic uh, approach, but then the researchers found out that this actually rejuvenates skin cells. Yeah? And, and so there, uh, I mean, there we talk hardcore bioscience. Yeah? Um, we first will go the cosmetic route, because as I said before, we try to avoid this biotech approval risk. Yeah? but potentially this also could become a medicament. Yeah. So uh, again, I mean, we, we are very open in, in terms of what kind of businesses, from what kind of scientific background uh, we build. For us, the important thing is the founders, yeah? so the, those who build the company, they need to master their topic. And we as a company builder are there to keep the back free of these founders, yeah? meaning we provide the financing. Um, we help with the whole structuring. We provide all these back office tools from HR to finance to legal. Um, we help, of course, with advisors from our network. But the, the, the topic captain yeah, is always the founder. And, and we are helping them you know, with avoiding the classic mistakes when you build a company because we have done this many times. So that, that's our job. Yeah. Excellent. Let's talk about the Maximum Longevity Prize. This is a very exciting uh, contribution by your organization. I'd love to learn a little bit more about that. Yeah, uh, it's the Maximum Longevity Prize for translational research. Uh, so for research which can be applied into a product very soon, so, so not the basic research. Yeah. Uh, why do we do that? Because what we have seen is that many researchers basically lack a little bit of time to bring their invention research results into the next stage being ready to found a company. And maybe that's one year. Yeah? And so we said, OK, you know, with a researcher, how much money do you need? And we said, well, with 50K, you can bridge this one year. It allows a researcher to focus a little bit more and maybe come from the scientific base into a business plan stage. Yeah? And of course, we are interested then to help a potential winner in building a company. But that's not a prerequisite. Yeah? So it also can be that somebody wins and says, well, thank you very much, but I do it myself. Um, so that's a bit the reason for the prize. Um, what I can say is, what, what, let's say we are astonished how fast this prize got made the round through all the institutes. So people know about the maximum prize. And I think we got north of 100 applications at this first prize, which will be handed out during this uh, Longevity Investors Conference in Start now. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not a member of the committee there, so that's independent. But I looked a bit at what was handed in, and it, it's amazing. So. Uh, I really think you know people want to get that prize, and uh, we definitely do this next year again. 
Wonderful. Well, that sounds wonderful. And in terms of what you're doing with Maximon, it sounds very exciting. So, Tobias, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much, Phil.